Hi guys and girls and welcome to Joe's Camera. Today we're going to run through the prizes of the Khalakhari Photographic Competition and then go through to the judgment of the June 2021 Photographic Competition. So for a start, let's just quickly go through the prizes. There are six finalists that's going to go through to a winner's weekend or a prize-giving weekend at the Khalakhari Lodge. And out of that six finalists that we will choose at the end of the year, one of them will receive an overall winner's prize. And that prize will consist of 10,000 Rand cash, 10 nights accommodation for two at the Khalakhari Lodge, as well as an A1 print enlargement of the winning image that will be displayed in the Khalakhari Lodge's winning wall that is busy being prepared in the lodge itself. The other five finalists will of course receive the accommodation and the food on the house. So that's part of the prize of rewarding the final six photographers. We have received uh, subsequently a bit of more prizes for that six. And that will be that we will do a short video of, or we'll do a full episode of the prize giving weekend at the lodge itself. And that will feature some of the, the finalists, their top images and small uh, short interviews of the finalists, as well as a, a, a lot of other prizes, like for instance, a, a butcher's box with a thousand rand from the Black Main Butcher and Grill restaurant in the Khalakhari Lodge itself as well as a one enlargement of one of those five. We don't know which one yet by Joe's camera. So we'll do an enlargement of one of the other five, not the winner's one. Then there is um, more wine, boxes of wine. We will announce who those sponsors of those wines are. There's another prize of two days usage of the Oryx 4x4 in the park for two days. There will be a three days photographic workshop that will include editing, a bit of landscape, a bit of wildlife guiding, once again by Joe's camera or Khalakhari Photography, both our companies. And that's it for now. As we receive more prizes, those prizes will be dished out between the other five of the final six of the photographic competition. With regards to the judgment, we've decided not to have categories, although we keep in mind that there's categories, but we, we don't want the top six images to come out and to have a, a category winner of each, where maybe there's six of wildlife or animal behavior images that is the best images. So we want to reward the top six images and the final six, and that might include, and we would like to have a prize for black and white or artistic, for landscape, for animal portraits, wildlife behavior, and bird portraits or bird images. If those categories are not the top six, we will not reward it. We might have a small prize for those categories, and I think that will turn out like that. There will be some prize for those category winners, but I would very definitely want a black and white category winner in that top six, a fine art or artistic rendition of one of that top six, as well as birds. So we try and cover it, but we don't want to give a reward out to a section that is not part of the top six images. If you get what I'm saying, you can ask us questions or inbox me or on the comments. You can write about that. So without further ado, I just want to also remind you that this is a self-sponsored channel. We've put a, a lot of money into it and we do it because we love it. We want to capture images and, and video. We want to share it with the world to therefore hopefully inspire some people. And we believe everyone that's entered this competition also live by that slogan to capture the images and the beauty of this world, to share that with as much as possible and to therefore inspire. This is the first step to capture, share and inspire because what most people do is they just capture images and they just don't get to a stage where they either share it on prints or in books or on websites and so on. So this is the first step of, of capturing and sharing your images with the world and then also to inspire because it truly inspires at least us while we judge. It doesn't matter what the image looks like, each and every image are seen and if we've seen your handwork, it's really special. So we've done the three caps, as you can see the one, the flat that we've got and the two others that's got the slogan, the Joe's Cameras logo on and the slogan of capture, share and inspire which we truly believe and that's what I've been living on as a slogan and a motto and hopefully you guys also. So that caps are available at 350 Rand each. They're very good quality caps that we've hand selected and spent a lot of time with them and we will add some within the future. Um, that excludes the postage and, and, and so on and we will add all of that information on the website and the Facebook page and maybe Joe's camera as well. So that's it for the prizes. So let's get into the judgment of the June 
2021 photography competition sponsored by the Khalakhari Lodge just before the Khalakhari Trans Frontier Park and Khalakhari Photography, our website and our Facebook page, which includes Joe's camera. By the way, I forgot the Black Main Butcher and Grill restaurant in the Khalakhari Lodge is sponsoring a meal for two and a good bottle of wine at the Black Main Grill and Butcher for the best line image. So there's already another category that we want to enter. We might add more prices, but there's a very definite extra category that we can disclose that we will run and that is for the best line image and that is the Black Main Butcher and Grill at the Khalakhari Lodge. So the June 2021 images, as that's the most images we've received on it. So it's about 170 entries. And we can clearly see that the images are also, it's also elevated. So what's difficult is to select the top six or top 10 images, whatever it is for this month, because, you know, maybe the 12th, 13th, 14th image is just as good as, as maybe the sixth or the seventh. So it's a very difficult thing to judge. And just bear in mind, you know, we're judging another guy would have judged it differently and so on. So we will get to the end where we will relook at all the images and maybe just go and edit some of the images and tell you where you could have been this year, this month specifically. I've seen an image that could have been a, probably a competition winner if it was edited properly and the person has been creative with it. So so we're going to relook all the images towards the end and then maybe see what we can do identifying images that should have, if they've done something, just entered or would have been uh, selected for the finalists at least. If we run through, we've received once again a lot of images of batalia or raptors that are drinking at the water or raptor images that are captured at the water holes itself. I think some of them went through. We once again received some beautiful portraits, some better than the others. And we will discuss or do a program on doing the portrait itself and some advice on portraits. Uh, we have received some animal behavior images like the Schemspok and the Rattle fight. We've received more black and whites than we normally receive and artistic renditions, although a lot can still be done in that regard. Once again, a lot of lion images because that must be the icon species in the Kalari. And of these, we've selected the second judgment of these. And if I quickly run through this, the heron that captured the Sprilla, beautiful, and it tells you that these guys are not just standing on the water hole to catch frogs and small fish, they eat rats and rodents and snakes and all sorts of things. Another meerkat devouring a scorpion by Brem Holland. Beautiful male lion portrait with the rain depicting the desert and then raindrops, the, the opposites of the dry, harsh desert and then the rain falling. Gensbok and the rattle. Just a quick discussion on some of the images, the image of Elena Hanakova, this landscape, black and white landscape of hers, and the portrait of the lion. Elena has asked us why a previous image of hers didn't actually make it through. I've added these into the final judgment merely for the discussion of the image itself and to compare the image with the others. So first of all, this image, it's open, it's minimalistic. And what we then do is, is we'll have to go through the foundations of composition to at least have some rule of thumb of how we judge that. If you look at this, it's a very minimalistic. The majority of the image is minimalistic. And when that does happen in the color image, one would at least look at leading lines or some shapes or forms, or maybe the pastels, the saturation of the colors on the image itself. And if that doesn't happen with the majority of the image over here, then the interest in the bottom should overwhelmingly be more empowering. The first thing that we see over here is it is a Kalari landscape, but there's a bit of a yellow hue around this grasses over here. And then you've got the Gemspok, which is nicely standing on the dune, but it's looking away. It's walking away, so it shows its bum towards us and this one. So they do, they're not in a good posture. If these two Oryxes were standing, the one over there, and the one, the one, other one over there, or they would face each other or fight, it will be a different story altogether. So exactly with that, that's a direct black and white conversion with not any work done on the conversion. So what happens, this now enters the minimalistic category, as you can see on top here. Yeah? And from a black and white point of view, what we're looking at is looking at covering that tonal range between 12 and 1, which is 12 is a dark without no texture, and 1 is white without any texture. And the tones in between would be levels of gray from white into black. And if you have 
texture and lines, that's when you start completing the black and white photograph. So over here, you know, the, the tonal range is very little. It doesn't cover the 12 and 11, and it doesn't cover the one to probably three. It covers the, the mid range of the gray tones, and that is that. And once again, that Oryx is not facing us. I think it's a better crop in that it removes all the other uninteresting parts. Similarly of this image, we had to judge this image. What makes it different is the fact that it's a wet line, it's been raining, and you can see some raindrops over there. If we look at the black and white, it's very clear, a smudgy background, which we're looking for. It's not distracting from the line. It's a very soft portrait, but it had to come up, it had to compete with other line portraits like this one. And this, by far, a better line. It competes with this line, and it competes with this black and white tradition. So it doesn't stand the test nor does this too so i just want to throw that in and just for elena elena has, has entered some some good images and she really has some good images but that's just a critique on the three images that she's entered over here another image that she competes with from the line perspective is this absolute fantastic rendition of brame holland that shows the line in the desert absolutely no distraction around in the background a very smooth background almost studio like and this line it's not that wet yet so although the back is wet you can see the the body the the lines facing out and it's still got some attention if you look at the ears facing and it's looking towards something specific and the ears are following the eyes so it, it's still attentive to something and it's it, it shows a line not sleeping it is aware of its surroundings so a beautiful portrait of of this line we received uh, animal action, the Gemsbok or the uh, rottle threatening the Gemsbok and the Gemsbok going for it. I know the rottle is not scared, but I mean, those are formidable weapons on the Gemsbok. We received from Bram Holland another entry of this cheetah. I love the black and white. It removes all the color or the saturation, which is normally um, what catches the eye, the human eye, because the color is reality. And black and white is a removing of reality. So we can interpret this image individually. It has the, the, the cutout, if it's a cutout or not just a fade, it's quite well. So, so quite a different image of the cheetah and beautiful in black and white. In color, it would not have been the same. If we just go through, Franco Harov has done this beautiful, almost perfect lighting condition and it's all about light. If you look at the light on this very popular camel thorn tree and this rows of, of clouds, very beautiful soft light uh, and most probably almost a perfect lighting condition. Francois sent this image of the leopard. We love it. It's a typical Kalahari scene. You can see the dune grass and you can look at the Biersenbos and you can see the color of the sand, the hue of the sand, and typically portrays the environment of the leopard in the dunes in the Khalakhali. So a beautiful, beautiful composition where the colors form the composition, the texture of the two main grass olive forms the texture and then the main subject, the leopard that's shy and hiding be behind the grasses like it would normally do before it hunts. Uh, Gary has sent in a, a beautiful portrait of the caracal, the ricot. Uh, look at how smooth the background and the foreground is and it sort of centers and the only thing that is sort of in focus is the caracal itself with emphasis on the eyes. I don't know if there's if saturation and, and vividness or clarity could have pushed out some of the colors to even put some more attention onto it. Gio Juster is sending us to the ostrich and the blue wildebeest and a beautiful image. You can look at the birds and the pigeon flying away from it, which just add to the interest of this image. Some more birds sitting over there, clearly visible and as a silhouette and a beautiful composition. Gerard Tron has given me another good artistic photographic rendition of this young batelier. Look at the, the background. It's very artistically selected. It's not, it's not reality. It's not what it is. It's an it's a piece of art. So he's done quite a few things with this image. It's not just a background. He's put some, uh, just a click of light and inverted it in front of this batelier so that it stands out from its background. So beautiful composition of the camel thorn branch and the wings spread out that forms the repetitive C curve of the camel thorn branch. It is pin sharp, the eye, and the repet repetition of the contrast 
of the feathers of the bird and the contrast of the background to me is an extremely beautiful artistic rendition and I think sort of completes his previous entries of Batelier's on this composite artistic form that he's done. Hugh's done a, another beautiful landscape. Look at the colors. The, the purple in the sky is so, the saturation is so good that it actually reflects in the sand. And I've also received or experienced this where I experienced a red a sunset, so red that it actually it reflects into the, into the sand in front. You can see the orange reflects in the sand and the purple in that sand, beautiful. By you, Mitzler, another good portrait of a male lion. But once again, you know, if just a, a slightly more was been done in the editing, it would have just elevated this lion into another category. Interesting image of this caracal that probably caught the Steenbok. It's been eaten the neck, so it looks like this caracal has killed the Steenbok. Someone might have been so lucky as to have seen this. But look at this eye contact of this caracal. It doesn't look all that pin sharp, although it's sharp enough for this. For this size, I don't know if it will make it to an A1. Maybe it's been cropped, we'll, we'll find out later. But, but an excellent image of a caracal with the Kalahari sand in the background and how successful these cats are actually in the Kalahari itself. Jan van Seyl has seen in a couple of beautiful images. Look at how clear this is. The calm, the, the camel thorn and the springbok. Jan has sent in this beautiful image of the quillas as well. Johan Fischer has done a, a great job over here, full action. Although we see a lot of this and it could be overdone, a lot of people get this jackal and the actual action on the jackal and it becomes very difficult to judge it because it becomes a common sight. And, and the action around the water hole, we've received the majority of the images around the, the water holes in the Kilari. It's either the jackal that goes for the birds or the raptors catching the birds at the water hole and a lot of images or the, or the raptors drinking. So what happens is, is everyone sort of elevates into that level where they, they've got the lenses to be able to do it and then they've, they've got the patience to capture that. But I don't really know whether that's going to stand the test of time if we go into next year and we're going to get that as well. We're looking for something specific, something new. Now, of course, the wildlife photography is, is funny. Anything can happen. Uh, not just the jackal on jackal, something funny can happen, but it still depicts the behavior around the water holes in the Kalahari. One would like to see the same sort of attention in the rest of it but the water hole is the attraction it attracts the animals and therefore the the photographers go to the water holes because the action and the heat rate with the photos is going to be the most at the water holes so one understand that but from a sustainability point of view one must see that that at some stage something very special must happen but this very definitely stands out as one of the better images look at the facial expression look at how sharp that is so this very definitely must go through another raptor image this certainly must make it through because it's a beautiful Mary Jane Sesto. Absolute fantastic, clean, clean, studio-like image of a giraffe eating its favorite, the gray camel thorn, and the sun in there. So that definitely must go through. And uh, Tracy Slavin with an exceptional portrait of a leopard. If you look at those colors at the back, and she's received it during the rainy season. I've seen the leopards underneath the camel thorn trees with this backdrop. The backdrop's not too busy. You can see behind the leopard. It's as if that branches have been removed, but it's just been serendipitously so that the portrait or the animal stands out with a very clean backdrop and it's been framed by these branches all along with the grass in front here. Exceptional portrait of a leopard. So that's a bit of a discussion. Let's go into the finalists, and there we go. Congratulations, Brahm Holland, Franz Horov, Hugh Juster, Gerard Tron, Hugh Mitchler, Johan Fischer, Louise Fichter, Mary Jane Sesto, with two of them, Rian Bosov, Tracy Slaven, and Willem Kruger. And if you look at them, you can clearly see there's a few exceptional images, and you can look at the group of images, it, it's it's, it's pro-like. It already stands out and these can all go into a coffee table book or they can be enlarged if they are indeed big enough to be able to enlarge. If they're not big enough to be able to enlarge, they will go certainly into, into the social media. They would look good, but one would like that to be extended, to be able to print because a lot of guys can do crops that, that the image can appear in a coffee table book and in a coffee table book, it will always go into a rest of 
other photographers so you'll share it and you cannot be individually rewarded as an artist where your image can be blown up or indeed artistically framed a bit larger than A4s and A3s. So these these were through. I've already spoke to you about about this fantastic image of Mary Jane Sesto. I've spoken about Tracy Slavin's almost perfect portrait and this grass in front actually adding to the leopard's mystery, standing and hiding behind the grasses, underneath the camel thorn tree, between the branches and the grasses. And it's, it depicts everything that a leopard is. Another beautiful portrait of Rian Bosov of this female lion. Look at that background. You can't get backdrop like that in any other park. Most probably the Masai Mara, but not on the Kruger Park or anywhere else. And that's what makes the Kalahari Hemsburg Park such a special place. You can do the most perfect portraits and the most perfect animal behavior shots because of the clean backdrops. You Mitchell's landscape. We've already discussed, it's also in there. The beautiful owl portrait with that one out of focus in the background makes it a bit different, very clean. We've talked about that, that's gotta go through. It's a beautiful action action shot. I've spoken already about Gerard's fantastic. Why this is so good is, if you could get that battalion on this branch and you had that backdrop with this light behind it, which you won't find in a lot of millennia, then this is by far the best. So he's taken the best background and he's taken what he's visualized to be a perfect image and he's put that together. And this will sell at any time with a collection of others anywhere in a lodge in Africa. He was fantastic silhouette of the Bouvala Beast, the other leopard, the portrait of this lion. Once again, look at those clean surroundings of this lion and the rain in the desert that I exclude this one. Full on action shot. We get this quite a lot, but we find that this one is very clean backdrop. The lighting is perfect. It's pin sharp. They froze the action with a bit of branches. It's not just in the flight with the sows. It's the Kalahari, most probably the camel thorn branches and a beautiful action shot of this raptors. So there you've got it. Congratulations. What I'd like to discuss is this image of Gerard If this image of Gerard that you can see is absolute fantastic, there's a bit of noise on there. I don't know if it's because it's been enlarged or cropped and then just upscaled, but this image here is a, is a fantastic portrait and probably one of the top two ones we've received of male line for this year. But he could have done a bit more, seeing that he's an artistic photographer, there's something more that could have been done with this image that would have elevated to absolute international class. And I think there's another one I've, I've missed. It's this one of Mary of the male line. I love the, the black and white rendition of this. I don't know why just a bit more of the ear and the hair has been included into this frame over here because you got the white part of the mind, but nevertheless, it's a different rendition of this. Nothing detracts from the eye because it's black and white. There's no saturation and colors that takes away from the composition. Everything is centered within the whitish or the light part of this line. If you look at the black and white criteria, it goes from almost a pure white with no texture in all the way to blacks within that small space of attention. So you got pure whites and you got black blacks and all 11 zones in between. Outside, framed by a total black, so all the tension is on that. Also, good and thank you and well done. So Mary has done that together with that, which is exceptional images. What I want to show is if this image was done into this rendition, it would have stood the time of being the overall winner of this competition. And that's what black and white does. Although that's been grainy and you could see some of the some of the pixels, it actually enhances a black and white image. And this, I cannot stop looking at this image. This one is exceptional, but you can't compare it to this. So unfortunately, I must judge it according to that, but, but this to me is so for the better image. I've received. Okay, that's with regards 
to that. There's another one. I just want to give an example of, and I just want to use two images. Here's the other image of Irma Ferreira. The line's been taken like most of that, and I've, I've picked up that the, the editing capabilities or the editing is probably the biggest weak link. If it was an international photographers, they would have taken a lot of these images and elevated them into competition winners. Here you've got a portrait of a male line. It's fully extended. You can look at the whole posture, so the shape or the subject of of this image is, is the male lion. It's typically, it's standing in between the three thorn bushes and it is raised. The photographer is below the level and you have that subject which draws attention. Look at that male over, looking over the dunes like it normally does. But here you can pick up clearly that there's some dramatic clouds in the back and the foreground. And if you elevated the interest around this, it would have been just different. So what I've done is, is I've just quickly elevated or darkened the clouds and just pushed the saturation for that matter. Uh, nothing fine, just within 30 seconds done this. And look at that image over there compared to this one. Dramatic stands out and I would have most definitely put it through. So that's it. Congratulations to the guys that made it to the finest. Like I say, we're going to take the categories, if there's a black and white winner over here that didn't make it to the finest and we feel that at the end we want to take some images that didn't make it into the finals of the months, we also do that. We already know that there's some photographers. There's maybe a, a photographer that's progressed the best over time and we can clearly see it over here. So congratulations to all the guys. Please enter, make sure that you enter the photographic competition. It is going to grow and we are going to add more value to this where we're gonna later on take all the images, maybe take images that didn't make it, capture it on, on in Photoshop, edit a little bit and show you what could have been done with some of the images if the editing was prioritized. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time.